I'm going to call the meeting to order for the uh, August 3rd, 2021 Wallingsford Planning Board. So uh, the first up is the uh, public hearing on the Bison CUP ap application. If uh, Attorney Bruton would like to present, it would be great. Great. Thank you. Um, my name is FX Bruton. I'm with Bruton and Barabee in Dover. And uh, I'm here representing uh, Joan Bison, who's the owner of the property. With me is Bob Carey, who's going to be the contractor. Hi. And Vicki is here, and she's Joan's daughter. So if you have any questions, hit me over the head, stop me, and we'll go through those questions. Um, this project was in front of the July ZBA. Um, if you look at the drawing, you'll see that there's two spots where the proposed uh, structure or the addition to the single family home uh, will encroach upon a 15 yard setback. Um, that variance was approved, so we're here tonight and hopeful that we can uh, get a conditional use permit to allow an ADU unit. Ms. Bison is approaching 80. Uh, She'll be 80 in October. Right. So um, the theory is, you know, she'd like to prepare for that moment when she'd be difficult for her to kind of take care of herself. She's actually going to convey the property to her granddaughter who will live on the premises, so it will be owner-occupied. Um, she intends to build a garage as depicted on the plans uh, and then within the garage there will be a, an access point to the upstairs and in the upstairs there will be an ADU unit. The ADU unit will be uh, uh, less than 750 square feet which is part of your regulations. In addition the <coughs> ADU will share new uh, uh, utilities and services of the main uh, structure and it will obviously look as though it's part of the main structure, which is part of your requirements as well. Um, it will be integrated with an access point so that someone who's in the ADU can go uh, into the single family home, which is part of your requirements as well. Um, so generally speaking, this is fairly straightforward in terms of the hard part for us was talking to the ZBA about the side yard setback. Um, the best part about that is um, that a butter next to um, Ms. Bison uh, submitted a letter that you have a copy of and he expressed his full support and that was important to Ms. Bison but also obviously to the ZBA. So um, we're, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Um, I think the renderings certainly depict that this is going to be an integrated structure with the single family home which is exactly what you're looking for. Um, it's certainly going to be uh, 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 great assistance to Ms. Bison. The one thing I'll point out is I'm making that representation that her grandchild will be there. I'm not saying that to say that uh, there has to be that familial connection. You may recall ADUs used to require that, but they don't anymore. Uh, it's just by coincidence. So I just wanted to kind of make that footnote. So um, if you have any questions for us, we're more than happy to answer those questions. Hopefully it's Fairly straightforward application for you tonight. Well, thank you very much. Um, this was uh, before the ZBA. It was unanim unanimously approved. Um, before I ask the boards any questions, Mr. Clark, do you have any comment on it? Um, excuse me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to confirm. I, I know you wrote in the um, application that. Uh, me. ADU will comply with all town ADU regulations located above the garage. Right. So you confirmed that you went down that list, there's like 16. Right, and I can go through the list if you like. Uh, but I did I, do that. Okay, yeah. I, I'm fine. If yeah. the board wants it, that's okay, but I'm, yeah. I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah. And, and we Thank agree you. that, you know, some of these on the list, as you know, are more enforcement issues. Right. Like you can't do the following after the fact, but right. you got to get your permits, obviously, we need to try. Right. And some of them are, and most of them are what I just said. Yeah. So, you know, the utilities and things like that are the ones that you wouldn't intuitively think about. That's why I decided to mention, but I'm happy to go through that list if you like. But it, yeah, it's on it's right here. If you want to go thank you. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. Haynes, any questions for the applicant? No questions, concerns, <coughs> comments at all. Not a problem at all. All right. Sue, any questions for the applicant? Um, no, not at all. All right. Uh, uh, David, you're an alternate, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Any questions for the uh, applicant? I'm just curious, uh, accessing 
from the main house. Is that through the garage? Or yes, or it is. Yes, exactly. Right. Well, I'm just the ground level. That's correct. Yeah. Yep. And not that this is relevant, but we're going to put a chair lift on the stairs to go into the. Okay. Caroline, any questions? Could you speak to the, sep the septic situation <coughs> for the property? Sure. I specifically asked the uh, engineer, uh, well, actually, uh, I asked Kevin McNamee, who's not an engineer, but he's with the engineering firm Civil Works, and I asked if they had uh, checked to make sure that we meet all the state regulations with respect to septic, and he confirmed that we do. Um, he's not here right now, but he did confirm that, and Mr. Clark can, you know, when he gets to the building permit, and I guess, you know, double check that, I guess, if you'd like. But I did ask him specifically, and he did confirm that that was the case. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, Richard, any questions for uh, Attorney Bruton? I, I do not, no. I don't want anything. It was fine to me. I'm okay. Satisfied. Fantastic. All right, we'll just point out, open up the for the public hearing. I don't think we have any members of the public here that uh, <coughs> want to, uh, but if there are, Somewhere, uh, we'll, all right. Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing, um, and are there, and I don't. Although I'll ask, don't there any fur, further comments or questions from the board? I don't think so. All right. So, um, would someone like to make a motion to uh, approve the application? I'll make that motion. Oh, sorry, Mr. Clark. You have to accept it first, right? I'm sorry. Um, I'll move that we accept the Thank you very much for my <laughs> Thank you. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries unanimously. Uh, at this point, I look for a motion to approve or deny the application. I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, the motion carries uh, unanimously. Uh, Congratulations. Great. Thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Have a good night. She was very happy. <laughs> oh, yeah. See you. I'll go call her now. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks. See you guys. Bye. All right. Um, in terms of other business, um, anyone, did, uh, folks get a chance to look at the minutes from July 6, 2021? All right. Um, I'll move that we accept the minutes. All right. Is there a second? Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Carries unanimously. Uh, is there any? Uh, I think you're abstaining. I'm sorry. Okay. Yep. Uh, is there any correspondence? No. There actually is correspondence, but I forgot to bring it in, which is... I got a letter, and I'm hoping you got it too. I never get correspondence from the planning board at home, but I got a letter from the state of New Hampshire. I uh, don't know what you might be referring to. It was addressed to the planning chair, and I just got it in the mail the other day, and I forgot it. I meant to bring it with me, and I apologize. I will scan it tomorrow and send that it to everybody. Okay. And I apologize. I think it had to do with road work. There was, okay, so so there was not anything specifically addressed to the planning board, but there was correspondence that, interestingly enough, actually, perhaps it did, I apologize, perhaps it did address the planning board. I know that it addressed the Conservation Commission, but it, it addressed the planning board um, because we may have a historical district, and, and that is the premise under which the Department of Transportation uh, was notifying us that they intend to pave some of the state roads in town. Um, and in light of that paving plan, which they didn't outline really what parts of what roads, but um, some of the state roads in town, they, at, at least as far as the Conservation Commission, um, would like feedback about invasive species and other work that maybe would, you know, at the side of the road that they might consider at the same time. Um, whereas from the planning board perspective, any historical markers or things that may otherwise fall under our consideration that we would want to bring to the state's attention, um, of which I'm not aware of any. But we don't have a historical commission to be aware of that, which is probably why the planning board was notified. Okay, all right. And it's the first time I've ever gotten correspondence addressed as chair of the board to my personal residence. So. And I 
can't say why that might be, because that is certainly not our um, official address of record for appointed officials. I'll just say that. Okay. All right. Okay. okay. Next, the state roads beyond Main Street Route Four. Refresh my memory. What else? Can you um, Front Street between Main Street and South Berwick only, not the other side. Um, Main Street, Roberts Road, oh, Silver Roberts. Street, Goodwin, Rollins, Summersworth Road. Really. I will make a note though to scan it and email it to the board tomorrow. I apologize. I meant to bring it in and I, and I forgot. So, mm -hmm. um, Sarah, you were going to talk about uh, the noticing requirement issue? Yeah, so um, I'm going to just read you really quickly an email that I sent to Caroline and Tom. Um, so, actually, first I'm going to just say so, Foster's Daily. We have a requirement that all Clean Board applications require newspaper notification. Um, this is not, this is a, uh, it's, it's not required by the state. The state requires um, posting or publication. So you can satisfy the notice, noticing need by posting around town at like the post office, the library, the town hall. In our regs, we went with publication. And um, I talked with Mike Garby, as you know, who <laughs> lives next to me. Lives. So anyways, he said when he was chair, he had addressed the board about possibly changing the regulations to require just posting and to not require publication. And at that time, um, I believe it was Ed Jansen was like, no, he, he believed that they sh it should be in the, the newspaper. Fast forward to today, Foster's Daily Democrat has been acquired by a company. I'm not really even sure where they're out of. They're called Gannett Publications. They are very, very difficult to get in touch with. So it used to be that I would just email Foster's. They would you know, confirm that they were going to post it and the date. And then they had a website where I could go and print a tear sheet. Like, with Gannett, like, I don't even hear back from this company to, to confirm that things have been published. Um, they have no idea where Rollinsford is. Like, a couple of times they've gone, they've been about to post in the Portsmouth Herald rather than Foster's Daily Democrat, not knowing our communities and like what's our local paper. So anyways, so long story short, I guess, is I would like the board to consider changing our regulations to require pu posting rather than publication of newspaper or planning board notices, or at least to, to talk about it, to think about it. Um, I'm not sure how many people read the Foster. I feel like it's a dying that. medium. Yeah. <laughs> really, it really is. I mean, most people even subscribe online to a yeah. distribution email. I mean, a newspaper. They don't even get the actual print yeah. anymore. Um, I agree. I support that a whole lot. Uh, we can't. We can't change it for the ZBA. It is a state requirement that you publish in a, a newspaper of record any notices of any ZBA hearings. So we're just kind of stuck there, but where we have this option with the planning board, it also saves applicants two hundred and fifty dollars, if that's a consideration for anybody. Is there a requirement of what newspaper? I mean, I realize it has to be a local newspaper, but um, is there a smaller circulation newspaper that services the over area? Not really, is no. it? No, it's Seacoast. You got some smaller Seacoast papers, I understand, but the Coffee Times. <laughs> I don't know if you can call that a newspaper. <laughs> That's like seriously Fun the only media other thing, yeah. media that I can think that is even around. What about the points with Herald? I mean, not saying I'm not in favor of doing the posting, but. Same owners. Same owners? It's the same situation, um, yeah. <clears throat> it's really not as local either. Right? No, I, I agree. Yeah, I don't think people in our, our community get. I mean, they would tend to get the, I think, the Boston Globe. And Foster's rather than like the Portsmouth Herald. And do we know what other towns are doing, like Dover or Summersworth? That I that I can't tell you. So I think of Dover still advertising, but I didn't even realize that was an option. Hmm. 
and it, I think it makes a lot of sense, especially with the confusion between the paper and, and, and Saturday. They don't even respond to her. Right. No, I, I, and, I, I think it's a great idea. Yeah. I don't have a problem with it, and I agree with the whole dying, me dying media analysis. Has the pricing increased since they've been purchased? Is that another change? It does not appear that it's increased. Um, Which does not mean it's <coughs> inexpensive. No, it never was. No, it never was. We're dealing with a corporation. Yeah. Turner's not going to be their service again. Yeah, we're still, our fee is still covering the postings. We adapted our fee some time back. We should have updated them, I think, right? Like three years ago. So that's probably What is somebody up from? I think they're out of Indianapolis. They're, they're national. Oh, yeah, national. they're definitely national. Yeah. Definitely not. Anywhere that we know about. No, they're not low. They're not low. No. Mm -hmm. So, um, my only thought about it is, how is the fee structure? What the language of the fee structure? So, where you say it would save the applicants money, like it, it probably is worth the planning board officially deleting the fee in addition to deleting the publishing requirement, just for clarity that. It, you know, just to get the fee off the record, and, and to, if that makes sense, that just seems like um, clean housekeeping to me. Well, does it require multiple outlets, like public posting as well as publication? No, it's, it's uh, so the RSA so says... So one, one, one... What does the RSA uh, mean? It's, it's, it's uh, yeah, so it's RSA 676-7, and it says, notice to the general public shall also be given at the same time by posting or, or. publication as required by the subdivision regulations. Though we so do more. always post it also. Right, but that's using two vehicles to distribute yeah. information. Yeah. We're only required to really do one. Right, correct. And what is posting de defined as? Um, <clears throat> putting up public notice in public. At least two Spaces. regular places. So for, for town hall and post office. Town hall and post office, and then we do the website also, but that is kind of just extra. But and the, the library, the library. And the library. library. But it shows due diligence. It shows you're doing our best to right. work out. Oh yeah, we're absolutely. If you're posting in four places, it only requires one. Actually, it requires two. Five places. Oh, two Paper places. requires two. Paper requires two. And what it costs? I think they also do the Santa Falls quarterly. Can we do that? You mean the biannual? Um, Is it bi? Oh, I thought it was quarterly. <laughs> okay. Like, um, it no, you're right. To you're like right. Then we do it. That, right, what, right. Once upon a time, the school children voted on the name of that publication, <laughs> and it was allowed to stick. So um, it is a little yeah. confusing. Yes. No. That's a good point. Okay. Um, I I have a quick question for you, Tom. Like, so how do you how do you amend the regulation? Um, Is it require does it require a public hearing? Yes, okay. I think in the planning board on the subdivision uh, site review regs, it's just one public hearing. If it was zoning, I think it'd be two or three. But well, zoning you can't change it anyway. Well, right. you, you, you can't change it. It goes to town meeting, but it does require two public yeah. hearings. Um, yeah. No, this so this is. Just, these, these requirements are only posted in the regulations, yeah. not in the right. ordinances. And so that the board, the board can change them, but I think they still have to have a public hearing. Okay. So maybe we could do that yeah. next month. Sure. Um, And the town is on a Facebook page, right? It's the website. Well, well the fire, I mean, the, the police department has a Facebook page. So. It, it, it was a, um, the, the same volunteer who runs the website runs the plain old Rollinsford um, Facebook page that's yeah, close to comments. No, not that one, just the plain, <laughs> just Rollinsford, just close to comments. Okay. So typically when postings go out, um, via email, that they're also on the Facebook page. Um, I don't know that they all go out that way, necessarily, both ways, but the page exists is, is all I can really say to it. Okay. Sure, let's have a public hearing. And... Great. Good idea. All right. Um, do we have any idea of anything coming in for next month? Aside from, I have I have not seen any applications. The EVA has got a couple of things coming, um, so 
I did hear from Josh Lanzetta, um, and he has finally everything for the Norton application, but they've missed the deadline for August, so that's September. So nothing for ZBA in August, but I also got a request for a special exception application. So, um, and they also know the deadline, so that may also come up in September. Where's the subject of the application? For, for Norton? Norton. They need like 18 variances. I mean, they need, <laughs> I just got fault. Like that land, remember? On, he, on planet. Yeah, yes. remember he came, he happy. came to planning and it was like, anymore. yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. So they're trying to like straighten out their situation over there. And a special exception? No, she never mentioned good. what she yeah. was trying to do. But that's why skull blowed up. That oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's another block on this. We should yeah. speak out to her on that until we see an application. That's one ZBA for us, right? It, it, yeah, yeah. So that's a special exception. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's all I know about. Okay. Very good. All right. Well, thank you for all coming tonight. Is, again, please. I, I just just in my mind to clarify, um, pocket zoning within a zone is something that used to happen a while ago. And I, I just want to educate myself a little more on pocket zoning. Like, let's say something is zoned either residential, commercial, or industrial, and the term pocket zoning comes up. I have an understanding of it, but I'd like to hear from you, Tom, on um, your interpretation of pocket zoning. I've heard it referred to as spot zoning. Spot zoning, pocket yeah. zoning, yeah. Yeah, and that's it's um, a procedure whereby the board would amend a particular section of the of the of any zoning district, and to allow a specific use where it's not around, allowed in the surrounding zoning district. It's so it's truly <coughs> an exception within a zoned area. Yeah, it would. I mean, it's. I think it's illegal. In public perception on something like spot, or, spot zoning? Mm -hmm. I don't remember anyone having any kind of discussion or raising any concerns. And did we do that at one point in time? Pocket zoning, spot zoning, anything like that? Oh, I don't think so. Okay. I mean, that was been around a long time, but yeah, I don't think so. I thought I remember hearing it tossed around a while back. And, uh, huh. Something we have to do around um, the uh, certain exceptions permitted within a zone that's obviously not an approved use or something like that, but that's never happened in any time frame that you've been aware of. I'm not aware of it, no. I, I wonder what the application would be where you wouldn't either A, go to the zoning board for an exception, mm -hmm. or B, rezone the whole area. I remember conversations way back when I first out about we don't do pocket <coughs> zoning anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any more tells tells okay, me what so, time they did it. Yeah. I, so that's why I didn't know what what's the circumstances and, and what the public perception is of yeah. you get to do something but I don't and we're neighbors. Right. You know? I, I always thought it was the opposite, mm -hmm. which is and I haven't looked at the term well, but let's say you have ten properties in a zone and you pass a new zoning ordinance that isolates one of them to, uh, as opposed to the Others, which is kind of the same way, but I, yeah. but to make it more restrictive, I've always thought that was the way the spot oh, zone. I, I, I thought, thought well, men. Yeah. Okay, think, so maybe I think it's um, if if it kind of is reminiscent to me of a TIF district, like trying to target maybe um, a dilapidated building or a dilapidated block for economic development. So when when an area is so past being something that any investor is coming in to develop and yet it's an eyesore for the community or it's no longer on the tax base and it belongs to the town or something like that, you could target a bunch of opportunity, um, economic opportunity to that one little area. So for that reason you might make an exception because you really want to entice a developer. Right. To, on to, a positive to, aspect to enhance or, or, or yes. better, better a situation. Yes, but I think that you would handle it under the provisions of a TIF district, a tax incentivation, yeah. a tax in, um, incentive, incentivation district. Um, tax, yeah. tax incentive fund. 
you know, so, so you keep funds separate. In other words, the tax base freezes on that property at the lower level for a period of time while it's getting developed and improving. That's the incentive. So um, that wasn't my understanding. My understanding was more yeah. like what yeah, Tom that, was saying. That, that this is zone for this. You can't have X business in here, but Mr. Smith can. Yeah. yeah, so I can't imagine why a community would do that rather than require somebody to go to zoning or, or adopt a TIF mm -hmm. district or just rezone the whole area. So did it ever happen? I've never heard of that happening here. It doesn't mean it didn't, though. I'm just thinking back like in Ed Jansen days or you know, going way back. Got me. I do have one that one <coughs> should be comment. <coughs> there was a rumor online about Cass coming back to request uh, condition to request a change in the condition of approval. And I mean, I thought it said that they were going to be here, which mm. I didn't think was proper because I just talk, I didn't talk to him at all. I emailed Dan and told him what I thought the process should be, um, and not to just show up. So I'm actually glad to see that he's not here, but um, did you get anything from him saying that he was going to? No. Uh, so I'm hoping that he's going to re-notice that. Yeah. I, it does a have new to... application and re-notice since it's closed and there's been a notice of decision and it's, or condition of approval, like it's, it's all done. Yeah, it doesn't have to have another public hearing. But like noticing from scratch because it's done. See. <laughs> And they're all business. I didn't think that you had to do that. To my mind, the board made a decision. He got his conditional approval, not right. to mention that he agreed to them. Right. But since a decision was made, unless he wants to appeal that decision within a time frame, you know, within the regulations to appeal the decision, but right. otherwise, I don't know why it was passed. Because, yeah. Which I think is passed. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't yeah. see. And I, don't, I don't think he can do that until the plan is signed, which of course it is. But his agreement may have been a factor involved with the decision-making process that granted oh, yes. approval. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, I was, was... But to speak to that, to speak to that, partly, you know, I do appreciate the fact that he's being forthcoming in saying that he's would like to entertain that possibility as opposed to other situations and perhaps in that same zone of automotive businesses that, as I understand, said there would be some paving involved on and the approval. And I go by, I don't know, about 5.30 this afternoon. We went down today. <laughs> so, so I know. Um, I think and I'm not saying any names, but you don't have know, to, maybe I'm wrong, but I understand no. there are certain, certain areas to the left of the building for parking yeah. that an approval was given based on the fact that it would be paving, yeah. and there's not. But they won't. So, but I think they haven't built September, did they? No, he's talking about it. I think this, is a, that I think this yeah. is a much older approval. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That, is like, <laughs> that was like two years, three years ago. Right. But I'm saying, and, and am I wrong in saying that there was part of the approval decision process was there would be paving there? And right. I understand policing is a tough matter, and it's a small town, and we all have this, but. Yeah, that, that did pop up on the radar recently, mm. yeah. and so we're going to have to send them a notice and go through that whole process. But yeah, it's but once again, more involved in time of our staff and our resources to, to chase down something that was promised, yeah. and in defense of someone else, that at least being forthcoming, saying, I'd like to propose this before the board. Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Is this what I'm hearing that he didn't comply to the first agreement? It's not the Kevin's same talking about a completely different case that okay. is similar. Yeah, where I'd, ra I'd rather not. I'd rather not. So you're not somebody said, so therefore I'm in the dark. Well, somebody <laughs> said that they would pave. Not that dark. <laughs> somebody right. said they would pave, and then they didn't pave. Someone it's in that same zone, okay. a commercial enterprise in that very same zone, okay. not too far. We don't have to mention any names, though, anymore. Not too far from the It's the all public record, record, actually. You can name Sure. I can, but I, I just I think I, I think that's poor. Kevin. <laughs> 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 but we all know. Okay. Yes. Okay. You know. I do. So, um, Tom, to your point, um, I think we need clarification about because the plan is not signed. Does that mean that? you know, this 30-day appeal process hasn't started yet? Or, you know, I think maybe, would you mind, like, maybe getting in touch with the Municipal Association to see if they would yeah. comment on process? Sure. 
That's an excellent question. I think yeah, that would be that's an excellent question. Well, you know, this did, this issue did come up in relation to the um, that Tri City situation. Oh, back of yeah, doors. those people, the flatly. Mm -hmm. It's thirty days from notice of decision. Is it the same for ZBA and planning? It might not, but. Um, I think that that would be that would make sense to me yeah. that that it would be notice of decision. Yeah, just add two cents, I guess, there. Well, um, but yeah, before I, we deny something, you know, <coughs> it would be better, I think, to right. check. Right. But in this case, um, the plan was approved. Conditionally. Correct. What was my point? He's, he's well, but that's still a decision. His, he's going to test. <laughs> Contest a condition of approval, although it wasn't even necessarily condition of approval because it was just printed on his plan set. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And once again, that's a factor in the decision making for a board. And then, and then when he priced it out, which yeah. he, you know, that one would have thought, he yeah, had. exactly. Have been done before he had. I would have thought they would have. But that might have come into. That might have had some influence on the decision being made. Well, and it certainly might have affected his, the plan that he presented. Absolutely. If he'd known beforehand. Because we're holding him to, even though the plan's not signed, we're holding him to the condition that he was supposed to submit a landscaping plan. Yes, and, and I thought that they were almost done with that. Did they submit one, Tom? Yeah. A vegetation plan for the front. Mm -hmm. That was due within 30 days of... Right, he was supposed to do that, that we would look at and... Yeah, could you? Yes, you know, I can. Thank you. Yeah, that would be something to stay on top of. There were some, some things that fell through the holes through that process, I think, between engineering and owner and planning board. Um, I'm going to show my, my confusion between the two boards. In terms of amendments to the considered uh, thinking towards the first year and amendments to the zoning ordinances and everything else, that's uh, solely the purview of the ZBA. No, only no. planning. Planning. Well, thank you. So, having said that, is there anything we need to start thinking about? Impact fees. But, oh, oh no. <laughs> no, no. I thought about that tonight and I was gonna ask Sarah what's the deadline for doing that. No, I'm I'm that's I'm gonna I look forward to the discussion. It's in our ordinances that like we can charge yes, impact. We do, and my only comment is well, I have two comments. A, it's a whole lot of administrative work to keep that's track of. <laughs> and and B you, you have to keep track of the money and prove that you used it for whatever purpose it is mm -hmm. and keep it in escrow or else you're giving it back. So you also have to keep track of do you need to give the money back or did we actually need it? But to your point, John, though, I think this board needs to be very aware of um, the fact that we have large parcels of land that are um, owned by people who are retired or nearing retiring age and there's reason to believe that large parcels will become developed anytime now and the Bear Road property 58 acres you know is now just a single family home but that's a good you know we kind of scraped by that um, that could have been a very significant development so um, the master plan is I, I hope to be on the ballot for this upcoming year so that we can get clarity from the public around what this community ought to look like over the upcoming 10 years. But we need to really look at the regulations to see how can we make that development when it happens um, look like what this community wants it to look like and where they want it to be control it however it ought to be controlled. And so I don't know if impact fees is the answer, but I don't want to be completely dismissive of it either. I just think it really involves um, maybe a discussion with the select board about providing um, the staff time to deal with it, really. 
Well, well, what are your, both your concerns mm -hmm. are administrative. You, you know, monitoring it and also accounting for it and make it just user return it. It's still all one person watching the money. And it's more than can be placed on any current staff because they're already working at the capacity well, of their and when you consider position. that you're doing impact fees times 100 houses happening all sure. in pretty short order, that's incredibly burdensome and distracting from other it could be its own position. It really could be. Well, yeah. I, I also have to point out that um, in order to, you have to apply impact fees to um, projects that have had studies conducted. I mean, you you can't just mm -hmm. randomly say we're going to give it to the school. You have to, mm -hmm. to to like have a project to expand the school to put those funds toward. It's it's not. It sounds like easy money, but there's a lot of work that goes into it. Yeah, doing all the research. Right, right. because that's right. And proof. You have to prove yeah. these things. Right, and the, right. And the like, proof yeah. is, you know, if we're going to build a, yeah, like a six million yeah. dollar yeah. renovation to the school divided yeah. by how, you know, like you, you have to do some math and show how you come up with the school impact mm -hmm. fee, and then would it affect other departments so that, you know, maybe you have a fire impact fee or a police impact fee, mm -hmm. but what are you calculating that against? Because if you're not going to make a capital improvement, you know, to put in the math equation, you can't just collect money for the sake of collecting money. So you're saying you couldn't assume that workload? <laughs> no. It, it's a full-time job. Kevin, are you volunteering? No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I mean, now with everything else no, that's going no, on. No, regardless. Regardless, anyone in the, I mean, no one really can. It's quite involved, and there's uh, quite a bit of responsibility and accountability, you know, and... Uh, and, and, and I, you know, I know I, I'm not against you on that fact. I just look at that one component on what we have for staffing and... How does Nola handle this kind of situation? Give it to the finance companies. department. So the finance department takes it. Yeah. Yeah, we collect the, the town, collect, the city collects the fees and then brings them down to finance. And they oversee yeah. all yeah. the improvements and, yeah. and the divvy Oh, no, no, no. They, they oversee all the accounts. And the just, money. The, just the amount. Right, right. And then if something comes up that needs to be... It's like um, Caroline said, new police station, for instance. How yeah. much should be allocated to that from the impact fees? Right. And who, who does that calculate? That, that seems like a burdensome job. That's, yeah, that's the planning department. Oof. And how many, how many, many locations? locations and and how, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, how many yeah. are on staff in the planning department? In um, seven. And yeah, they, they have finance a finance department. Finance, yeah, it's like, they they have, have a finance, finance department. Yeah. Five yeah. Or six, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure a lot of these studies are subbed out, contracted out yeah. to experts, and, yeah. you know. But I, and I think mm. that, like, the towns do pay out of pocket for all that work to yeah. be done ahead of right. anticipated you impact. you got to pay the people that are doing the work, yeah. yeah. Right, if the cause is sound and defendable and justifiable, I think sure. that it could be done. But... To your point, though, like justifiable and all this, when you figure out, when you pay all of these professionals to figure that out, I don't know if that goes into the accounting of what the impact fee is, but when you put all this administrative work together and hiring the professionals to figure out what needs to happen to the school and the police department and all of these other departments to accommodate the development, can you account for the administrative oversight of even that process before you even engage in those projects? Because you know, if that pays for a person, that pays for a person. But if it doesn't, then that's just a loss. Yeah, that doesn't I'm, really... So you're saying the town would be responsible for paying for the surveys and the... Well, yes. If we want impact fees, we have to prove that the school is going to have to grow. But that and what is that? impact fees. Well, it can, but we have to prove it first. And so maybe, I'm wondering, like possibly the study to figure out, for example, what has to happen to the school. Maybe that study can be accounted for in, in the impact fees. But the administrative cost of finding somebody to do the study and coordinating them and meeting them over there and getting the quote and then taking the, the engineering study and then divvying that up and figuring out what that means as far as an impact fee, like all that work, I don't know, is covered. I, I don't think it is because there'd be a uh, potential of finding that, you, that there's no yeah. reason for an impact fee. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work. work. Then you would have to eat that cost. Yeah. Right. All right, so you have to once again have an administrator that's very confident and knowledgeable of these scenarios of what a new police station costs and what the yield, what new school costs and what the requirements is and what the you know what the growth and the and the population yeah. is and, you know as far as what that requires for schooling. So, but 
To John's point, though, about what are we going to be thinking about for the zoning ordinance, yes, I think it would be worthwhile for people to review the zoning ordinance and think about our challenges and the kinds of cases we've seen um, and some of the administrative um, difficulties of some of these cases to see what could be improved. There were a couple of amendments that didn't go on the ballot last year in, in an effort to keep the ballot more concise because of the pandemic, but also just in light of inevitable pending major development you know, with that lens, is there something that should change in the regulations? Do we want to um, prescribe aesthetics? Do, you know, do we want to, you know, insert any kind of, um, for example, green development? Like, that's another, because we're a, a, so, the subcommittee met with Kevin and Tom and I um, around getting our planning regulations audited for stormwater compliance, um, perhaps inserting language to require certain development to be green, for example, installing rain gardens or having um, green, green roofs, roofs and things like that, like that will be, those suggestions are coming down the line. So they may be partially in zoning, I think they're mostly going to be in subdivision and site review, but um, they may partially be in Zoning. So Are there any towns that we know or cities that have those kind of regulations? Green the green. The Stratford Regional Planning yeah. is, is pulling them. They'll come up with language. Yeah. And I, I think, think the development's are coming. I mean, I think as the older generation passes and the younger generation, and I'm not judging, but I think that you know money speaks pretty loudly to the younger generation, and uh, even the big parcel that sold on there, that nothing says that that guy can't take a summer home in Hawaii and decide to sell that property. I mean, that, that could certainly happen too. There's a 21-acre parcel that recently sold too, and that will be developed probably in a cluster subdivision. So... But it'd be good to be thinking about this before these hit. Yes. And then you're reactive as opposed to... You know, yes. To so do we, what's the deadline for putting impact fees on the... for a hearing? Well... Can we just say put on the agenda for next... So I would say, look at the zoning... Right. What's that? We do the hearings in January. Okay. Perfect. I think there's the first one in December and then the second one in yeah, we typically do it the first in January, do, but I think there's a first one. Yes, yeah, so you discuss it in, in January. January. Um, but I would say look at the regulation, look at the zoning mm -hmm. to see what it says about impact fees. Um, and then we need to think about how that language might change. Okay. And administrative costs. Yes. But I would encourage us all to review the regulations and think about um, Every upcoming meeting between now and December, considering what what maybe ought to change. <laughs> this ghetto, um, Tom, you had mentioned possibly um, deleting the requirement for a hearing for um, ADUs. Yes. This is the conditional I, use I, for yeah, that, that would be a zoning. <coughs> excuse me, a zoning ordinance amendment. Yeah. And we'd have to go. Yeah. Well, I think Caroline was saying. I think that was one that you had suggested we do last year that we tabled. Oh, um, okay. But the building permit process would take care of whether or not um, a proposed accessory dwelling unit meets the regulations. Mm -hmm. So Tom would look for that anyway for the building permit application. Um, and, and if it doesn't comply with zoning, it goes to ZBA. So. Um, it, it's for us to consider what is the value to the town or to the applicant in reviewing accessory dwelling unit applications. Especially, if I may add, <coughs> a two-family dwelling does not require it. So if someone applies for a permit for a duplex, it's, if it's an allowed use, it's just a building permit process and doesn't need any further approval from zoning or planning. To be built as a two-unit. As a two -unit. Say again? To be built as a two-unit. Yes. As opposed yeah. to an ADU being added to an existing right. single family. Right. right. I have to run. It's got a message I have to run. Um, so. Are you looking for motion? Yes. <laughs> Is there a second? Sure. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you all for coming tonight. I was reading off a few of the different